Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson, and today we are doing Jin from BTS. Anyway, we have done lots of these guys, but before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when new How to Draw videos are available, and we have now done, <clears throat> excuse me, five of the BTS fellas. We have already done, we have got Jimin, we have got Sugar, we have got RM Rap Monster, we have got Jungkook, and we have got V. So these guys have all been done. If you check out the How to Draw Portraits playlist, they are all on there, uh, which is just great. There's lots of uh, different lessons on there. If you check out the How to Draw General playlist, there's more than 130, 140 on there. And like I say, I'm just doing as many as I can to keep stuff going. Uh, oh, there we go. Jimin is legging it. <clears throat> he is. He is just basically legging it off the page. So we can see the stuff for Jin underneath. But we also have the Harry Potter playlist, How to Draw Harry Potter. If you check that one out as well, that's all. It's a playlist dedicated to Harry Potter characters. And when I've done... Jin and J-Hope, then I will do another Harry Potter lesson for all you Harry Potter fans. And um, again, I've got loads planned for the future. But before we go any further, do check out and do use the hashtag drawing with Billy as well. On social media, it's been brilliant putting the video up uh, of other people's work and encouraging people with their drawing. Now, here is the page. Check out the link in the cards and the description for how to lay down this grid. That uh, is a 26 minute video, shows me laying down the grids. I set this one up, it's a two centimeter, 20 millimeter grid. And I like this center line, which is why there's this little board around the edge rather than just starting in the corner. Right now in the banner is the actual dimensions that you will need the markings and they're in millimeters so there's 10 millimeters to a centimeter so one centimeter is 10 millimeters two centimeters which is these grids is 20 millimeters so do check that out that's all the information that you need for that grid it's a4 paper which is 21 centimeters by 29.7 210 by 29.297 uh, millimeters and it's just smooth cartridge paper. I put these lines on darker so that you can see them. And even when I'm doing the construction lines for the drawing, that I put on darker as well so that you can actually see them. You don't need to put them on that, that dark and then you can remove them. Now, I did have somebody uh, leave a comment where their friends had been picking on them, uh, saying using grids is cheating. Really? Well, professional artists have been using grids for centuries. These are people who have Sir in front of their name. And even today, some of the top portrait artists on the planet. And uh, I shared with this person, Andrew Tift, his name is. He's won the BP National Portrait Award. Absolutely stunning artist. And he uses grids. So it's just a technique. And I love helping you. If you check out now in the cards and the description, the link is in there as well. How to draw anything, part one. That's freehand drawing. I use shapes. And it just means you can draw anything. And I say now you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else. But using a grid helps. It breaks things down. I use the shapes as well. So you see how to lay things down on the page. You could just go straight in and draw the outline. But I am teaching you lots of general drawing techniques as fast as I can. Now, today we'll be using a 2B, a 4B, possibly an 8B pencil. Uh, we will be using the trusty kitchen roll, uh, and which you can use tissue paper to blend. We will be using a blending stump and possibly brushes to smooth the skin. That's everything. So again, like I say, here are the brushes. There's the blending stump. You can also use a cotton bud. Here are some of the pencils. All ready to rock and roll. And then I use a putty rubber. That's an old used one. That's uh, These are kneadable erasers. That's the newer, cleaner one. So I use those. And then to get rid of the lines, I use the Mars plastic. Anyway, I explain as I go along. So now, oh, just clean off some dust off the picture. I now have the trusty 2B pencil and we are going to draw Jin from BTS. Now we're going to come in and we're going to start up on the centre line, this 105 
10.5 centimeters center line. I'm just going to put a mark in and you can see how now we're going to come across and I'm just kind of doing a bit of a dot to dot. So to the 85, the 65, but here you can see there's a triangle for the hair. And if we come down, we kind of go, oh, we can come down to the 105 horizontal line here. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. But then I'm going to just bring across a little triangle there. And that's going to be where that ear is. So now within his ear, I've got a C shape. And then up above, we've got a kind of D shape on its back. So here on his hair, on Jin's hair, we have got this triangle for that hair there that comes across here in this square and then we can just curve that up we've got a little rectangle of shape there but we're going to put a triangle across and then we can curve the shape up which is the top of his head the hair going right to the top and between the 105 and 125 we've got a little v and then here we've got another little v between the 125 and 145 and then we've got a little triangle there between the 145 and 165. And then here you can see again, just using the squares, again, you can do a dot to dot, but if you think of it in shapes, and then here between the 65 and 105, we've got this little D shape on the 185 vertical. And it comes down just below there. So now I'm coming down below the 125 horizontal just to the right of the 165 and here I've got a triangle just a thin triangle and that's the side of his hair on the left hand side now this comes up and it goes it's actually a bit wider and then we can connect those lines there and so now We've got a kind of curved, you can see we've got this leaf shape here. So coming up to the 65 on the 145, you can see where the hair is from the top here. And you can see this curve down and there you've got that kind of leaf shape. And then again, above the 85, I'm just indicating where that highlight is. And then above the 65, that's the highlight coming round. So now, coming off from the 145, we've got this hair coming down. And we're going to come right to the 105 cross point on the centre line here. And here we've got a V. You can see we've got that V shape there. And we've got that second one there. And that's for that hair. And... Here we have the hair just coming across and I'm just going to, from the center line, coming up above the 65, we can see going on that you've got a diagonal here, but I'm doing little lines in the direction that the hair is actually growing. And then I'm just, you can see how we've got this hair that goes up at the top above this little V and we'll, we'll fill that in later with some darker strands. But just using simple shapes very quickly, we've got the top of Jin's head in already. Now again, this is an interesting pose because the light's coming straight down and we've got this fantastic dark shadow. Now I'm gonna be careful around the jawline as we come down, but we're gonna do, uh, <laughs> we used to, I'm starting to laugh. Because <laughs> I literally nearly said we're going to do that caterpillar for his eyebrow. <laughs> and it's just something we used to say as children. I don't know why or where the actual phrase came from. Uh, but it was just something we referred to people's eyebrows as caterpillars. But it's just, you know, I mean, you get it like it's a little sausage shape. Who knows? So there we've got this kind of baguette or caterpillar or, you know, long kind of bendy oblong <laughs> shape. 
So there we've got his right eyebrow in. Now, as we come down, we've got... I am laughing, that's great. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your drawing. This is the joy of actually thinking of shapes. It makes drawing far more enjoyable as well. So now we are below between the 105 and 125 to the right of the 145 vertical. And we've got said second caterpillar that's going off. In fact, we need this leaf shape to come up further down. And then in the kind of centre part of the box, we can indicate that kind of little rectangle shape, said caterpillar, and that's the left eyebrow. Now, below the 125 line, we've got a little V here, and that's the corner to the tear duct of Jin's eye. And we can see how the point of his eye on this side, you can see there's a little kind of rectangle shape going on there. And then we want the full dark, and this is going to the halfway point. We can just bring that curve of his eye in, of his iris. And then we've got the curve coming down round and underneath and then that lower bit again I've done that really dark so that you can see that and I will end up rubbing some of that out because the, the light is nicer and we've only got dark on this side so I'm just going to gently lift off I'm going to use the clean putty rubber actually some of that line and just put the box back in for now. Now right in the eye, I'm going to indicate this now, we've got a highlight. So I've just put a little square in where that highlight is and we need to leave that pure. Now you can go back in and use paint to pick that up but I don't want to do that. Now right back on the 105 centre line, uh, Oh, yeah, it's the 105, 105. It's right on the cross point. There we go. We've got the corner of Jin's right eye. And we've got this fantastic dark shape here. So I'm just going to draw a little box. That's the shadow going off on the corner. Now, as we come over, we can see that the point is about on... Yeah, you know, we need to come over. It's about there just below the kind of halfway line. So we want a V here. So we've got that V and then we can just carry that curve over to the, the shadow. And then past the centre line, we've got the curve of the iris. And we've got this kind of box here. And that's where the eye then comes up. And we can see that the eye, I mean, it's, it's just really dark here because it's inside the nose. And then again, we want a little square for the highlight in his eye. Again, I'm just going to come in with rubber. I'm just going to use My electric eraser just to pull that out this you probably can't even see what I'm doing there because it's so small but I just want that paper clean for where that highlight is and there we've got using a V and a couple of rectangles a little square we've got that shape now if I just indicate underneath and then we've got a little crescent and that's the lower eyelid underneath now we come down to the 145125 and here we've got his nostril right on this crosshair. Now I'm drawing, it's just a little box with rounded corners really. And that's the shape of that nostril. And then to the left of it, 
to about the halfway point. We just want a C shape coming up there. That's the edge of his nose. Now I'm being quite light. Now here we've got a V that comes underneath and you can see how that goes up on that nostril. And then kind of right in the center we've got the second nostril. You can see it becomes like a, a, a P shape, capital P that's kind of fallen over. So again we've got this little rectangle with curves and then we want just a nice curve I'm being very careful and light now because it is quite light here but we can also off the top of that P we can bring a curve around and then going up here we've just got we've got the strong highlight here but you can see there's a rectangle and that's the top of that nose but it becomes a kind of V shape, inverted V there, into what's going to be the shadow up on the top of his eye. Now the side of his nose here, we've got another triangle and that's the shade coming down. And then a triangle coming off the corner of his nose. There's going to be shadow there. It's not too dark, but it is there. Then coming down underneath his nose, we have... It's just a kind of cone shape. You know, it's just imagine a triangle, but don't go up to the point and you've got that curve and that's the center part of the top of the upper lip between the top of his lip and the bottom of his nose. Now, his lips. So we've got this slight curve going across the 125 line, but then Coming down below the 165 horizontal here, and it's in line with the, that needs to be in the center really. So I'm just looking at the nostril. That kind of needs, you can see how it's pretty much got the same kind of space each side. So from there, from, the 125 to the nostril and from the edge of the nostril to the 145 should be about the same size. So I've just darkened that up for my own reference. And then the lip comes down to just past the kind of left hand side. So I'm drawing a little rectangle. And then the lower part of the upper lip comes across and there we've got a little rectangle. And then we've got a V here. We've got a, di a triangle shape comes past the 105 line and that's that part of the upper lip. Now his mouth's open so we can draw just a straight line across and then we want this nice curve like a if you think like a semicircle half of a circle but it's, it's half of an ellipse and we can draw that curve down it's actually to the right of the center line so it just curves a little bit like a D shape first and then starts the curve across and goes up and joins that point over there and there's a little V on that bottom part. Now his teeth that are inside we've got a little rectangle and then another line underneath and that's going to be the shapes for his lips. Now I haven't actually put the barrier on my camera which I normally do so if I've been sticking my head in I am so sorry I will rectify that and uh, I don't know how far I've been leaning over. Anyway if my hair hasn't appeared then great. So now we want to come down and put in Jin's chin and this is just above the 205 line. So here we've got this curve and across the center line we can see we've got his jaw, you make a triangle there. And then we've got another triangle going up through the next between the 185 and the 165. And his jaw line, it, it's not straight across right to the corner, it's just to the right of the 65 vertical.
and then this comes up just to the left of the 65 line. Now again, on this side now, we want, we can see here we've got a little triangle in the corner of the 145185. And I can take that line up and out. Now his neck here, as we come just to the right of the 125 line, this side of the left side of his neck is going to be defined by this collar. And we can see how the collar comes right the way across to above the 245, just to the left of the 85. So I'm going to bring that down. And we can see how that line is going to come as if it's down there. And then we've got a button here, just a circle for the button. And then we want a slightly just curved line. And then here, if we draw a little shape there, that comes down before that it's like a V shape with a curve just on this side of the V. That's the edge of the collar but the top of the collar makes his neck. Now if you want to put these lines in inside absolutely accurately then use the grid now and fill that in. And we can bring the edge of the collar over. Then we've got his cardigan jumper top. That comes over. We've got a little inverted V shape there then we can see there's a little triangle there now we've got we come across right across diagonally across that square then just curve it out and that goes to that edge then we've got the seams in the jumper and that goes right up to that top then we want this pattern so we just want a couple of rectangles basically so we've got a rectangle that comes down and that third one and this is quite dark here so we can just indicate that seam that's in the shadow oh, and again the reference image for this is up on the community tab so you can download this with the grid on as well now coming over we've got this tie so I'm just drawing a box for the top of the tie and then a little rectangle that comes down and then we've got the diagonal lines another one there another one that's just kind of underneath now here above we've got so got a little parallelogram rectangle that's kind of leaning then here we've got a V so you can see we've got a V that comes down and goes up and that curves over. So now coming up to the 205 line we can see we've got how this kind of triangle then becomes thinner as it goes up to the top underneath the 185. So that's just going to go to there and it just starts to curve a little bit and we can bring the edge of the neck out. So again you've got a little V at the top and you've got that V at the bottom there. That's how you make that larger shape. And then the neck comes up underneath the hair and then the hair here we have a V that comes off at the back and the ears inside there And then the hair, that square is at the bottom. Now we want, we've got a V shape here that comes off over to below the 205. So you can see that V shape there and then you've got a little triangle. That's the right shoulder going off. You just indicate the creases that are inside. Now here, We've got, oh, I missed a little circle down here. 
just above the 265 right on the 45 line and that's the other button on that side and then we've got the edge of the jumper that comes down now we've got these stripes like I say you can just kind of look and just whack them in really quick if you want but again I'm going to go for an impressionistic and you can fill these in now you've got one there's the little white line there's another little white line and here we've got two wiggly white lines there's one and we can see just a different shape little another wiggly white line and here in this square we got a little white line white line that'll be a white line and we've got one two three one two three coming down through the button below it right at the bottom of the collar we got one through the button there's another white line then come up a little bit more there's another white line just above the top of the button then we got one two three four five one two three four five One, two, three, four, five. And they're going to curve around. Like I say, I'm just whacking those in really, really quickly. But again, here, underneath his chin now, coming across to the 205, we've got a triangle. That's going to be the shadow. And then I'm just drawing a kind of round shape. And that's the shadow coming down. And then at the bottom, we've got this V. And then we've got the shadow coming underneath his hair. So there we have, using simple shapes and the grid, getting the outline down of gin. And that's how simple it is. Next stage, we will put a full more detailed outline down. So now we're going to put in the detailed outline. And we're going to start, I'm using the 2B pencil, we're going to start with Jin's right eye. So we can see we want the curve coming over and coming down to his tear duct. And then we've got this dark line coming down into the tear duct. This dark line coming off where it curves down and round. Then we've got a little bit of curve in the corner coming to underneath the eye, the eyeball. And then we can just carefully join that up. Again, it's iris, the outer part. Bring that dark down. And again, we've got this little kind of highlight across his eyeball. And then we've got this curve of dark coming off and then that shadow behind got a little bit of dark on the lower eyelid coming around coming up to join and like I say you've got that dark coming right the way off now I'm just going to fill in dark of his pupil and his iris just being careful I'm leaving that highlight exposed as well but we'll fill this in darker with a 4b or 8b pencil later but it just means that you can actually lock on to Jin's 
eye and we've got rather than just the outline we've got that solid now if we come over to Jin's left eye we just curve up right to where it touches the top and it comes over a little bit and curves down and then we've got that thicker dark part on the upper eyelid of his eyelash he's pointing out Then we want the line that comes underneath and then goes up underneath the iris and then just across the 145 line into the corner in his tear duct. Now again, I'm just going to fill in, being careful around that highlight all the dark of his pupil and his iris. Again, I'm using this piece of paper so that I don't smudge everything. Now, and now we're doing a lot more detailed work on the drawing. And we can really darken, not as much, I'm just filling it in a little bit. The tear duct. So again, we come up to the eyebrows. So now I'm just gonna use the flat because I don't want a solid line, I want this softer, more fluffy line. Again, as we said, the caterpillars earlier. So we can curve over the right eyebrow. And that's the dark there. So again, now I'm using the flatter side of the pencil and we're coming up to the left of the 145 vertical on the 65 here the center part we've got a lot of lines that are coming down now there's lots of hairs that are going to be coming over here but we need to be able to remove the grid lines so some of these will get rubbed out a little bit but we're just going for these more solid darker lines that are coming down from his hair and then we've got the curve going up to where the highlight is and then this one that comes over the right eyebrow we've got we can see that line goes up to the right of the 145. Then we just bring the line down. We got that V at the top. A few more there. And then we've got this V coming down right over the eye. It's just there's the V shape. Just indicate highlights a little bit and we've got the shapes here so coming up to the 145 you can see the shape of the hair going remember the hair you draw it in the way the hair goes people say oh you know oh, it's a tutorial on hair every portrait that's got hair on there's a tutorial on hair so there we have hair coming over and we're coming down towards the 65 line and you can see it just comes through underneath before to the left of the 185 and then we've got this D shape that comes out comes down and we've got a little kind of step and then it curves around and under and then we've got this V shape coming down the side of his left cheek and again, I'm spinning the pencil just so that I get a slightly sharper line. So I'm just increasing 
depth of the intensity of the line down his cheek. It's very soft. And again, I do these lines much darker just so that you can see them. I'm going to be careful on the one coming up to his left ear. So now we're going to come up and we're going to do the hair coming over. So we come past the one, two, five. We've got the hair that's coming across here. Then we've got that V, that V that was created. It's the hair at the back that's coming all the way over down the back of Jin's head. So this comes down, round right past the outside of his ear. And I'm just doing little lines because of the way that his hair is styled and grows rather than one long continuous line because we want that kind of ruffled look. Again the same with dark coming off on the back of his neck to the hair that's coming out down the back. Then we've got his neck coming down into the collar and then we can come down to where it joins above the tie and then the shadow caused by the collar coming onto his neck. Again, I'm just going to bring that collar down. We've got the button. That goes up. And we can just do these lines on his shirt and the edge of his shoulder. Just indicate those a bit quicker and darker. Now you can see we're just bringing up those lines very, very quickly. So now we want the right side of his collar going up and then his right shoulder coming off. Now, this is the tie with the diagonal lines on. Again, we've got a shadow that's coming over, so I'm just indicating that quickly with a couple of lines, but not dark. And we can see that stripe coming over a bit better. And then the tie folds back on itself underneath. Again, just need to indicate a couple of other stripes on there. That was just quick little wiggles. We've got four little holes. So now I'm just sharpening the pencil, just so as I've got a sharper point to deal with. Now we come down. And we've got the hair and this V shape down the side of his cheek with hairs coming off. And then we want the shape of the ear. So we can see this curve that comes up. We've got this little rectangle that we put in. You can see the shape of his ear comes up above the 105 line. So we've got a V of hair coming over the top of his ear. But I'm just going to draw the ear shape going right behind. And it curves over, comes in, and then we've got a little path of black hair. But it just wiggles, curves in a bit, then curves out down below the 125 line. And then his earlobe comes down and curves up and under. Mm. 
Now, it's a bit below the halfway line. So, just so you can see. Now, I've got the side of his cheek going up. And I want this curve just nice going up to the underneath part of his ear. Now, here we've got, you can see just the kind of elongated C shape, or you can just think like a leaf. You've got the curve of the hair and the curve of the part of the ear, it's like a C, you can see, you see a C shape there, and that's to the entrance to his ear canal. And then we've got the big C shape inside but for the detail now we're going to do the kind of fold over the top of the ear and that comes down and it curves up goes up and underneath that V and then kind of comes across as a bit of a diagonal and then juts down all the way to the 125 line where it then curves that little bit and here you can see we've got a little oval and then the fold goes right to the edge of his ear. Now above this we've got this fantastic shape which is a bit of a triangle. You can see there we've got the triangle but we've got the curve going into the dark. So this comes down and becomes the shadow on this curve here and then above we've got the triangle part that comes down and creates this interesting little shape here and that's the top of that C that we put in now again underneath you can see we've got this fold of his ear that comes down and then we've got a dark triangle and then we've got little rectangle that comes down curves across and again a little rectangle there that's the top of that highlight and then here we've just got a little C shape that's going to be that shadow and that's the complexity of that ear put in very quickly and simply just using simple shapes now we're going to come over and we've got I'm going to do his nostrils first so right on the one two five one uh, one four five we've got his right nostril so I'm bringing the curve round comes through the one four five line and then the dark and curves round to the right of the one two five and just like we did with the iris, I'm just filling in a little bit of dark. Then we've got a shadow that comes underneath. And the curve of the nose. And then we've got the curve of the nose coming off, this C shape. And you've got this shadow right underneath, which I'm just indicating carefully. Now and the same with the left nostril. You see how the left nostril is completely low. We've got the underneath part of his nose going up. The curve comes down, goes round and goes up into the right nostril. And we've got that shadow that's coming down. We can just fill that shape in quickly. Now, We've got from the corner of his mouth, it's just to the left of the centre line, the 105. And that comes over to about halfway. And then the curve comes down below the 165 and through the 125. And then we get this little triangle here which is creating the bottom lip and then a little little kick off 
horizontal. That's the dark of his lips. Now, the inner part of the lower lip, which is right next to the teeth, that just curves over and goes across. And then we've got the centre where his teeth is. inside the dark so you've got a little line in between his two teeth and then you've got another line just to the right sorry just to the left of the one two five line now his lips the upper lip we can see how the curve just comes up now again i'm, I'm being very careful i'm not doing a very dark line because of the highlight that's right above it it comes over to underneath the nostril and then we get a slight curve past the 125 line and that's the upper part on the left hand side of his lip the curve comes down and we've got the direction of the shadow so we come down to the 125 165 line and you can see how the shadow comes over and then goes to the corner Now the lower lip, we've got this stronger line underneath that then curves and goes up to the corner of the left part of his mouth. We've got dark shadow there, just a little ellipse going over, a little curve and the same for that lower lip. And again, I'm being very careful not to obliterate. So now gently using the side of the pencil, I'm just indicating where that shadow is going to be going up. Again, we've got shadow coming down. We've got a stronger shadow there, a circle here, shadow there, and the curve going over. And that's our outline of gin down. Now we need to remove, just find the trusty Mars plastic, we need to remove all of the grid outlines. So I'm holding the paper so that I can rub these lines out because as I say I, I put them down much darker. In the corners I've got little bits of masking tape that stop the paper from wandering around. And uh, that's something that I'm rubbing this so hard that it would rip the paper off. Hence me covering Jin's face now while I rub out these lines up the side. Because there's lots. Now... Again, I need to hold it so as it just doesn't move uh, for the actual video. That helps. So again, here, because we've got so much large area, even inside his face, because it's so light, because the, the light's coming pretty much straight down on Jen. I mean, even now, I've just... rubbed out that part of his nose which I didn't want to and that's the danger uh, of using a larger rubber especially for very important detail lines so again there I can fit it in and that's fine again on the right hand side I'm just trying to get that out really quickly And another thing on grids, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, someone was picked on saying grids is cheating. Yeah, right. OK. I saw a portrait uh, officially released today of our Queen and it was super realistic. Now, I don't know the person who actually did 
the portrait but it was especially in the current time with covid and everything it was probably done from photographs which means they could have used a grid they could have done a trace they could have done it completely freehand now with anything that is absolutely photographic they've either used a grid or they've traced it projected it on and traced it and i have no problem with that at all artists have been doing it for hundreds of years so it's not a problem so don't think it's cheating you're just learning a technique if you want to learn to do it completely freehand feel free it's great now i need to sweep these off i still haven't found i had a piece of card especially for sweeping these off on here's a big old brush and this will show me what needs to be removed next but it's easier to sweep it rather than sweep it straight on the floor if you sweep it onto a piece of card or a piece of paper you can then sweep it much easily into the bin so again this is a mars plastic eraser but it's smaller and i can get into more detailed areas so here around the eye in between the hair while i'm waffling doing these bits like i say this is where i talk about art and art in general and and especially this thing about the grids and this is where i say to you enjoy your drawing enjoy your art your painting and just learn to do and people will appreciate the craft and the time and if anybody says oh you're using the grid it's cheating really okay then you do it faster better and you can learn you know it's like people say to me oh well i'm i'm you know or they could say to me i'm doing this teaching people how to cheat using grids well i've been out to live music events and drawn musicians who were playing instruments live and drawn them while they are playing their instruments no grids there and it's just like stop being silly just enjoy your art it's so like here in his lip i can actually get in with this rubber and actually remove and there around the nose right up underneath the nose and the nostril i can get close enough in with this and then here inside the ear here in the ear i can get in close enough even with this one and inside the hair where the highlights are now inside this shirt there's there's loads and so I am going to, I mean, that's, that's quite big and chunky and it's just not going to get in. And you can get smaller ones of those, but I'm just going to use this electric eraser. I'm going to try and get a smaller, fine eraser because this actually hurts holding the button on, believe it or not. It can... You know, if you're doing loads it can cramp your finger up bizarrely yeah, let's get rid of those lines in there so but because this is a finer and again you, you, you you're rubbing out and you press on too hard And it actually stops the eraser from working up by the neck and that's really annoying that the the actual rubber stops working so again right down the bottom now i did lose a little bit of My shadow line there now again I'm now just gonna sweep this off and 
and there's enough of the lines off now I think but a much finer rubber means I could get into much tighter spots so I am going to do some research and see if I can find one but there we have our outline down of gin now we've got to start the shading so now we're back in with the 2b pencil and we are going to put in a load of tone so I'm going to do this quickly so I'm now just using the tip of the pencil and I'm very quickly filling in all of the skin tone just one kind of general tone but a, a lighter one all over Jin's face and his eye and I missed that uh, yeah the highlight's still there a bit I just really darkened it down in his eyeball I've just noticed now again the lighting on these photos <laughs> is very soft on the face so that's why I'm going quite lightly but very quickly and again we've got this highlight down here on this side and the strongest highlight is right down the nose and so I'm going to leave that highlight where it is now I'm also going to just come in with the putty rubber and because I can see where I'm going to I'm removing the construction line so then I'm not drawing over a line going just straight down his nose now all across his right eye socket then coming down now again we've got this stronger highlight here but we will pull that off and again on the top because the light's coming down directly but we'll have to be pulling and you can see here we've got there a diagonal line right across from underneath his nose and we've got a stronger highlight here so I'm going to leave that could have left the one up here but by his eye that's not too much of an issue now we're coming down his right cheek and I'm not twisting the pencil Again, we've got a stronger shadow coming off underneath the bottom lip and I've just noticed like I say this is why you try and get all of the grid lines off that's going to be in that shadow anyway so we can darken that down a little bit now he's here the upper third is a bit darker so I'm just drawing that darker anyway and then we've got a lot of highlights in that here now I'm just filling in all the way across the neck it's a little bit of darker tone I'm still using the 2B pencil you can see I've just done a general tone and it's filling in the face now this is just something that I like doing especially on pictures that we're trying to do photo realism techniques on so I'll come in and I've just noticed I haven't even done his lips so let's just whack all the way across 
the upper lip now the lower lip has got a strong highlight here so just being careful and it's a stronger shadow underneath there but by just using a piece of kitchen roll I can soften the lines and just push the graphite pencil around and it just gives me a nice tone now you can just do the sketch the sketchy lines and that's absolutely fine but I really like softening this layer down first and it just softens the tone really really quickly and there you can see we've got all of that area is now covered very quickly and I'm just going to do the lips and then we can just push the pencil around so that's on the shirt we've got that lighter blue it doesn't matter that you go over the white because we'll pull that off with the putty rubber again it's lighter on this side we can just push some of the tone around and that's really quick it's just a good quick way of actually building up a lot of tone so now I'm going to come in with a 4B so this 4B I've still got a bit left so we're using the pencil extender I'm just going to whack in quickly all of his hair now again on previous ones of the BTS guys I've just concentrated on the face and put a lot more tones in there but just by putting in and we've got to be careful here because we're right next to the side of his cheek in this little V it's going to be darker the reason I'm using a 4B as well 8B can snap really quickly but it just means we can get like we did with the skin we can get a nice undertone down and up from the top and we can fill in the areas again I'm going in the direction of the hair I'm just leaving here we've got a little V the highlight as much as possible but still indicating a few lines just coming down and then underneath the hair we've got the dark of his eyebrow I can indicate that and then coming back up to the top again this is going up to the top of his head where it's styled and combed forwards to the split V over the top of his forehead so here we've got the dark curving round right at the top of his head and then the fantastic dark patch now this will be filled in more than likely with an 8b pencil and so I'm just filling in again in the direction of the hair this mid-tone of the black but coming up to where The highlight is that's coming up to the back of his head again I'm just using the flat of the pencil to try and fill in as much of the area as I can quickly 
And as I say before, if you want to go for full photographic, you will spend days just on the hair. And I know that people who do hyper-real, photorealistic drawings, you know, I'm doing this in two, three, four hours. That's the length of my lessons to give you the basics. And they will spend 40, 60, 80 hours on one drawing. And again, you've just got to spend the time if you want to do that level of detail. And that's a choice. You know, they're putting the pores in the skin. Again, this eyebrow behind the hair. I'm just using the soft flat of the pencil. But in the direction that the eyelashes, eyebrow hairs are actually growing. So now these hairs at the top. And it's darker at the back as the highlight comes over a little bit. And we've got that flourish of hair going right up and over. And then so that's all that down there. And we've got all the dark underneath his ear. And the hair down behind the back of his neck. Again, I'm just going for a mid-tone for now. So that's all then. I and mean, you can see we've already got a good shape starting to form for us. So again, come in with the kitchen roll. And I can carefully... smooth this over just like we did with the skin and it just means I've got a nice complete filled in tone now again we've got the smudging that I just went over but this is where you can just come in with a putty rubber and you can pull that off really quickly now again, got a little bit on the shadow there, next to the hair, that I didn't want. But we've also got, so now in this ear, we've got a highlight on the lower part of the ear. Can just pull that off quickly to indicate a little bit on the upper part of the ear. Again, just coming off the side of the hair there. But here we've got this highlight right next to the left eye. So we can pull that up side of the nose up part of the lip next to the nostril and just pulling out that highlight there on top of the chin and then this one underneath the right hand again you can just hear me dabbing that and top of the lip and that's just very quickly giving us a lot of good tone all in Jin's head and the entire head so we've just filled in a lot of 
the paper and it just means we can build on that now so now we're going to come back in again with the 2b pencil and underneath the hair here we're going to have a darker shadow and again I'm using the tip just carefully building up the tone backwards and forwards so here we can see coming down by the side of his eye going up in between the two eyebrows we've got this little dark shadow line that's going to go up and we can just fill that with shadow again over the eyebrow and then completely going up to this highlight on this side in his left eye socket here we've got a darker shadow going over the top of the eye coming down right next to the tear duct just got some flat spots so that just sharpens your pencil and it rounds and then that way I'm not fighting it's a flat spot and I'm working with a new tip of a pencil and I can get better control over the cross hatching that I'm putting down so again that upper eye part right underneath and then coming off the corner we've got a shadow coming round towards the eye the eye edge of the iris and then a little bit coming out from the corner and you've got that fold underneath that goes over And then we've got a little bit of shadow coming out from the corner of the eye. Now coming down by the side of the nose. We've got that little darker shadow. And I could just feel the pencil before I sharpened it was just really scratchy in here. It would cause a problem. now we want that shadow just coming down the cheek a little bit again the same just coming off the cheek curving round from underneath the eye but as it comes down it just becomes lighter and you can leave this like reflected highlight again off the shirt here or whatever's white off to the side it's slightly lighter as we come down but we do need the curve of the cheek so I'm just adding that little bit of tone and already you can see that eye is becoming more realistic just because we've it's not so flat anymore because we've got the shade here here and around and underneath now we do the same underneath the left nostril and the nose and we've got this curve that comes up again I'm just being very soft with the pencil and as I say all the time it's easier to add tone than it is to take away so now coming down underneath you've got a like a V shape here of darker tone but it's nice and soft and that's why we're using the flat soft part of the pencil I can increase the tone of the nose and then coming around the right nostril we've got a reflected highlight inside we've got this darker shadow coming around And then the side of his nostril 
got a little bit of shadow above that makes that highlight stand out and it just comes across onto his cheek and then right underneath we've got this darker shadow coming out from underneath the nostril and then we've got you can see here we've got a curve from the side of the nostril coming down to the left hand side of his mouth but a little reflected highlight above the lip so I'm filling that tone in and I'm just blending it over a little bit and then again bringing it down matching coming down this left side underneath the chin the chin underneath his lower lip on the top part upper part of his chin and here you can see we're just darkening that little bit down as it comes down and already that face is just looking more three-dimensional now all down that left hand side now we come across the chin underneath leaving this highlighted bit and we're just filling it in very carefully all the way up underneath the nose now I'm going to come back up and we can see here where we've got this curve coming over into the eye socket we've got a bit of tone coming down the nose and then it kind of stops we can go back into the eye socket and you can see how it, like this one that comes off here we've got this little diagonal that's coming across onto the top of his chin cheek sorry chin that's a cheek that's a chin that's a cheek that's a chin now again we've got this tone in the eye socket a little highlight there so underneath the eyebrow just darken that a little bit then it gets much darker underneath this hair right on the right hand side again I'm darkening the side of the eye going into that corner and we've got the curve coming under now we've got the shadow coming down under the hair on the upper part of his right cheek again that'll be much darker so now if you squint you got we've got this line here which is his jaw line going all the way from the front of his chin up the side of his jaw up to his neck but the shadow kind of all morphs just above now there's a reflected highlight and then you've got the shadow underneath again I'm just bringing the shadow down just filling it in now softly bringing that tone up and over and tone coming off the back of his neck so now here we've got this wider area of tone underneath this kind of morphs over onto the lower part of his right hand side of his jaw and then we've got this little section here and again the same right down by the collar and then up by the left hand collar into the light we can just put a bit of that tone over and then underneath the 
chin, we've got that little diagonal line of shadow. Again, right up in the ear, I've just noticed. <laughs> much darker tone in that upper part that little triangle there darken that down that bit there and underneath now we can see we're really starting to see more three-dimensional form appearing and down the side of the neck And that's just with lots of cross hatching. So again, I'm just going to come in with, I mean, you see that's very dirty, so we need a, a clean part. I'm just going to come in with the kitchen roll, but just fold it up into a more controlled shape. And I'm just pushing graphite pencil around a little bit and here we can push it over the cheek underneath the nose then this lovely area underneath the jaw down the neck So now I'm going to come in with this brush just to help with some of the soft transitions. Now finally I'm going to come in with this putty rubber because I've noticed on his chin here this is the clean putty rubber just some darker grease spots and again up in this highlighted part and up on the nose and underneath that nostril I'm just pulling the highlights up the edge of his head upper lip again just dabbing around And that's looking quite good now. And again, we've just got to build up more detail. Now we're coming back in with a 4B <clears throat> and we're going to start darkening up some of the details. If I can get my chair close enough to my desk. So anyway, well, here we go. <clears throat> and we're going to start on Jin's eyes. So we've got... The reason we're using the 4B is it's easier to get darker down. So we've got this dark coming right the way over the top. Now in this corner part, I'm not pressing on like I was here where you've got a solid, more solid line. I'm creating the dark, but with a soft edge. And then we've got the eye coming down in the corner we got a dark crisper edge and again underneath and then we've got this dark all in and around his pupil and his iris so it's darker here where the actual pupil will be and underneath the upper eyelid and then very dark around 
this corner again I'm just gently curving the top of that eyelid a little bit a little bit more and then just softening it off and then we come down to this reflected highlight underneath and the iris is dark but I'm not doing it as dark as up here I'm just really building the intensity in the dark and I've left that brighter highlight and then we've got that slightly reflected line across the eye in the center which is a darker gray now again coming right into this corner we can just increase the dark a little bit and then the edge of his eyeball again coming down we've got shadow coming down across the eyeball and being very very light there now I'm just gonna fuzz out some of the top edge and that's just these eyelashes pointing away and so now we come back to concentrate on this dark under his eye and it's all it's going to be the mass of dark hair and these points I mean already there now you can see that eye is starting to lift off the page so that's quite good for us to do you know when you start building up the detail you actually start to see more of the face come together so again now we want we've got this dark in the corner of his eye underneath this hair that's come down again I'm just using the soft of the pencil not pressing on too hard fold above the eyelid just leaving that little highlight a little bit I'm just bringing it all the way over the dark underneath the upper eyebrow now off on this side I've got the dark coming over to underneath the hair and we've got a little bit of highlight showing but we've also got this shadow caused by the hair coming out so you've got this little little area here of just reflect a little bit of highlighted light And then we can come down and really build up some of that dark coming down off the shadow caused by his hair. So again I'm going to soften all that in we can use the brush like I said you can use a cotton bud now I'm using the flat of the pencil up at the top in his hair here and we're going underneath where the hair is so when we draw the hair over the top of it we won't have lots of brightness showing and shining through so now again I'm going in the direction of his eyebrow again using the soft flat of the pencil and we've got the shadow kind of underneath the eyebrow the tone just kind of comes out and we're going to have hair coming over this and we can bring the direction of that darker mass of his eyebrow over to underneath the hair and 
and then just slightly increasing the angle of the tip so as we can get that much darker and again I'm, I'm just drawing little lines in the direction that his eyebrow is growing and then we just do a few more and just graduate out into that eyebrow now you can see it's just already lifting off the page so now we come over on to Jin's left eye got this little curve coming to the V of his tear duct the edge of the iris again there's that little bit of highlight there but you're going to fill it in just fill it in very carefully then we've got this dark that comes over right to the corner again I'm just filling out that larger shape and that's his eyelashes coming out over onto his eyeball again being careful to leave that highlight showing and then the little diagonal highlighted bit lighter bit in his eye now now we on the lower eyelid bring a little bit of dark around just coming around a little bit and then a shadow in the corner of his eye so we've got that crease of his upper eyelid coming over I mean, just filling in some of that tone right into the corner we've got this kind of V we've just got that much darker passage of the upper eyelid then coming up underneath the left eyebrow again same thing just filling in the tone and darkening the left eyebrow underneath the hair that's coming down and again we'll darken all of that down when we put the hair on a little bit later so again just indicating some of the dark this passage of dark of his hair down the left hand side of his face that brings out the highlight so I'm just putting a soft transition just there on the edge and then it becomes very crisp right next to the highlight and there already you can see that's really starting to lift Now we're coming down to the nostril dark right inside and then just like we did with the iris it's still very dark but don't you can do it completely dark but just allowing a little bit of lighter tone and then you've got the shadow that comes right down underneath and then comes out under the right hand side of his nostril where it joins the upper part of his lip so again the left nostril just carefully filling in the shape around the edge and he did all the work putting the outline down and then just filling in that dark inside the shape Again, we've got lighter tones, but I'll come back and do that with the 2B pencil. But already you can see that's 
helping us to see a little bit more clarity in the face. And so now we're doing the lips. And we're going to bring the dark down. So actually you go up and across. We're following the lines that we put in before. But I'm using the soft edge, you know, just keeping it slightly blurred, not as crisp as around the eyes. Then we can fill in the teeth. And that very corner edge where that comes down just peaks up a little bit. So now we want the shadow on the lower lip. So I'm going in the direction of this skin and how the lines on the lip grow. And that goes up to that kind of half point. And then we can bring the shadow over and down. Now the upper lip. And then we've got a kind of light a bit here. And you can see how the shadow goes up to the very top point there and then comes down. Again, it's just very soft, just being gentle with the pencil. And that is starting to give a bit more clarity and definition to his lips. And then we've got the shadow on the top of the lower part of the lip and the shadow underneath at the bottom. These are the kind of darker points. Again, because the light is so full front on, it's just very, very soft transitions. And then we've got these slightly darker shadows. creating a little bit more intensity. So again now, this upper lip, we've got this highlight here. So upper lip, the upper the like the front part of his lower lip, like the upper bit that's sticking out. That's where the highlight is. But it's very, very light. Again, I'm just using the 4B pencil. You can use a 2B for this. And we've got this little curved shadow at the end. And then full shadow underneath. Now, I'm going to come in with my soft paintbrush. And I'm literally just softening these tones and transitions down a little bit because the skin is so soft. And this is what allows me to build on these transitions because the brush is so soft but you, you've still got a good level of control so here you can see we've got the shadow coming up over the nose in between the two eyebrows so I can just push that tone around a little bit and then coming down on the side of his nose and down the cheek and down the upper lip you can just literally brush and this is almost as if you're doing makeup and I really like this as a technique it's just really really good because a blending stump you can get very harsh lines now you can be very soft and gentle but 
I really like the effects out here coming off the corner of his eye. You're basically just brushing some of the dark off the eyelash that becomes that shadow there. And again, the same underneath the hair there. But you can see we're getting that much nicer tone. So now we're kind of doing underneath the nose, down the side of the nose, here we've got underneath the right eye. The tone by the right nostril. We can build that up as it comes across. Now we've got tone coming across the inside part of the cheek going towards the nose. Again, I'm just brushing it down and over. We've got this highlighted area here. So again, I'm just softening the edges. But now, coming down off this cheek, I'm bringing the tone down underneath that highlight and joining it to this part that we brushed down here. And you can see already we've got that shape on his cheek. And we need to bring that tone all the way down to the lips. coming off the side of the lips. And again, I'm just going to pick up some of the 4B pencil that we put in up here. And this is how we just build up the definition and the shape using a brush. And again, you can see I'm covering a large area here very, very quickly. coming up over that upper lip section and then underneath coming down the chin. So again I'm going to use a slightly stiffer brush because it's not as soft as a need on the face and we can really push that pencil around quite quickly and aggressively using this harder brush. Again, just pushing that around the ears, down on the shirt, and just pushing the tone around. And that's really starting to give us a lot of good form and shape around his face. I'm just cleaning the brushes off. Now I'm going to come in with the blending stump. And I'm going to just push the tone around on the lips a little bit. The lower lip coming down to the shadow underneath at the bottom. Again, going into the dark. We can push that tone around. Now, as we come up, we've got the shadow underneath the nose. Just wipe that on the kitchen roll quickly. So here we've got the curve of the nose. Creates that slight darker line. And then underneath the nostril, the left nostril, we've got that little darker tone and just outside it, got a little bit of 
darker shadow. And again, just using the softness of the blending stump, we can push the pencil round and increase the density of the tone. As if we, you know, you're using a pencil, but you're doing it and you're already softening the edges that you want. Now we've got that reflected highlight around the inner part of the nostril. And then need to bring, again, it's so soft. And just increasing that shadow going up there. The one caused by the hair next to the eye. And just wiping it off a little bit. Then we've got the coming underneath the eye. We've got this little crease coming round and under. And then a little bit more tone coming off. And you can see here on the cheek, upper part of the cheek, just build up some more of the tone. So that comes out over onto his cheek. So we've got that shadow, that shape, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, again, if we do the same Coming over again, I'm just pushing the shadow around underneath the hair at the top. Now we're coming down into his right eye socket, just blending that and pushing it around underneath the eyebrow, and coming down to where the tear duct is. And again, just like we did here, we've got a little bit of darker shadow just coming down the nose a little bit. Then the curve coming under. And then the one going over the upper eyelid. Bringing the intensity of that shadow down. Again, we'll make it a little bit darker as well. When we add a lot more of the shadows. <laughs> Just cleaning the blending stump off a little. Again, now by the nose. And here we've just got a little diagonal line coming out and over the cheek. And we can just build a little bit more tone up coming down the right hand side of his cheek. Underneath the lip. That shadow leaving this highlighted area on his chin. And then coming right the way down and underneath. So now we've got the shadow coming over, really allowing this highlight to stand out a little bit more. That's actually really lovely. Now just bringing that up. That's looking really, really good. So I'm going to come in with a 2B pencil and we're going to do the detail in Jin's ear. We want to bring this down, darker line 
by the part that's next to the entrance to his ear canal. Again, I'm using the flat, so I'm getting soft edges. And, and I really love this. I mean, I've had people ask me, oh, you know, why don't I do colored pencils? Learning to use a pencil first is fantastic. And it's the most basic, wonderful, expressive medium that you can learn the quickest and easiest. And, uh, you know, a set of the color pencils are hundreds of pounds or whatever, you know, hundreds of dollars or... I don't know how that kind of translates into rupees for all my Indian followers, but they, you know, not everyone can afford very expensive, high-end coloured pencils, and this is why I love doing pencil portraits. I think they're so emotive. So you can see there we've just used the flat of the two B pencil to increase the darkness inside that ear and the ear canal. The creases around this one's even darker. We'll come probably come back in with a 4B pencil on that one. Though I'm getting quite a good dark tone there, just using the 2B pencil. So again, we've now got his ear, his lower ear lobe. So I'm just crisping the line up that frames the ear. So now I've pushed all of that dark in. So here you can see the fold. We've got that tone coming underneath. A little bit going up above caused by the hair. And then we just want to soften. I will probably come in with the 4B pencil. So again, into the dark area, just smoothing and softening that around. The top part is a softer tone. We come down to this crease, this darker crease, and that curves around. And then we've got going up on the ear, this tone, and then again in, inside next to this dark C shape here, we've got darker tone, then we've got a little square of tone there softening the edge a little bit and you can see that's already starting to look like an ear with the curved shapes and the creases and the highlights on the creases again just now softening the lower part of the earlobe leaving that highlight showing So I'm now going to come in with the 4B pencil. And we've got this lovely dark inside this triangle. So yeah, we did need the 4B. I mean, you can really press on with the 2B. But the dark of the 4B. Then the right in the corner curve of the shape and inside the upper part of his ear bringing that tone over kind of darker at the lower part and kind of reflected highlight inside at the top here So I'm now just using the 4B to increase the dark around the ear just so that you can see the effect that just putting those simple tones in has on the ear itself. So again, we've got this fantastic shadow here. I'm just softening this off a little bit before it becomes the hair.
then this triangle of dark hair at the back and there you can see the ear is really taking shape and form purely by indicating the dark around it and inside so again we need to increase the dark on that part inside this C shape and down the front and that dark really helps to to lift it off so now I'm gonna come in with the tip of the 2B pencil and just give some more clarity and, and darker tone on some of the creases so the edge of this kind of Y section we can soften that coming down into this U shape Again, coming up underneath the hair and the 2B just gives us that nice control to just add little bits more of tone where we need it and on this crease this fold here just make that a little bit darker so I'm going to come in with the the putty rubber and we've got highlight by the entrance to the ear canal fold on the top going in And then on the earlobe. Again, that looks like an ear now. A little bit of highlights on the top and out the side. Now again, oh, rubber's actually falling apart. That's the thing with a, a putty rubber, it's just kneadable and it will break and split. So, just squidge it to make it work. Just indicating some of the highlights on the lips again. Just using the lines. On the lips so pinching the putty rubber so it's nice and thin and you get those kind of crease lines now again right underneath there's a little reflected highlight so we can indicate that going across and then this edge and again up the very edge of the lip but then because this is not such a bright highlight we just come in carefully using the putty rubber and the putty rubber the blending stump and I just cleaned it off beforehand you can just smooth a little bit of tone over and you've still got that reflected highlight showing and that just builds up the detail a little bit more so now if we come in with the blending stump just push some of this tone around again a little bit just again to soften it off and just leave the very brighter highlight showing
Again, just softening the shadow next to the hair. And that looks like it's working really, really well. So now I'm going to stick with the 4B pencil. And here, now, we've got... From the ear coming down, we've got the shadow. But we've also got... Coming down from the hair, the point of that hair, we've got this dark line that comes down into the shadow underneath his chin. Now again, I'm being very, very careful to not put a sharp, solid line in. So that's the darker part right underneath. And it comes down Again, this is just an exercise in tone. So I want this shadow underneath his neck to increase and this will then frame the face and give us a much more three dimensional solid set of features and form actually on the face. So coming down by his Adam's apple. And I'm just using the soft of the pencil, not twisting it around. And coming off underneath the chin. Again, you can spend a long time doing this tonal work. But I'm just trying to get it down quickly to show you where and how to put the actual tone down. So that you can build up your skills and you can spend as long as you would like. Again, I'm doing this really fine and soft because of the way that Jin and the other BTS guys have photographed. So here now coming up the lower part of his jaw, we've got a reflected highlight, but the shadow just coming down and just starting to come across that lower part of his chin. So again, here we have the shadow coming up to the ear and that hair. Now you can see we're just really building this tone up just very carefully. just to make it work and frame the face. But we just need to be careful. I say so as we don't go too far, but it is a very sharp delineation. It's not sharp as in, it's a strong delineation, not sharp. It's a strong change of tone from the light up here down to the face and the tone below and then we've got the tone at the bottom of the neck again that's much darker where it's right next to the collar we can 
bring this V section around. Again, going up now the left hand side of the collar. Then we got the tone coming down from underneath the ear. So again, now we just need to soften it off. We've got that darker bit at the top first. But we just need to soften it as we come down the side of the neck. And come down to join the tone in the center. Now we're just carefully filling up that edge. And it's just very strange not having a really crisp solid line. But you can see where the line of the jaw is. So you just do a soft tone line with the flat of the pencil. And that's what's going to make it work. And make the portrait stand out correctly. Again it's just a case of keep looking at the reference and you're just building up the tone a stroke at a time. And you can see we've now got this really lovely shape forming underneath his chin. And then the edge of his cheek on his jaw, the lower part, that darker line. Again, we've got this darker tone. Again, I'm, I'm just carefully increasing it a little bit at a time. So now, I'm just going to come in using the stiffer paintbrush. And again, this will give me the softer transition that I'm after. So even here now I can just push up some more tone. From his jawline onto the cheek, that little bit. And that gives us that really nice three-dimensional effect on the face. So again, just really softening the transition on the lower part of his jaw. Now all of this on the neck. And by the collar. And this is just giving us those softer tones and transitions that we need. Now, I'm going to come in with the blending stump. Because this will allow me to pull some of the darker down. Right on the edge. And then down inside the neck. And I'm really just pressing on for that darker tone. Then being careful as we go up that edge, just wiping it off a little bit. But now I'm using it just like I would a pencil. 
I'm just doing the cross hatching really pushing the tone around and just softening it where I need it and just just like here darkening so we've got the softer kind of highlighted bit just picking up a bit of the dark bringing it into the center of that Adam's apple So now the jawline right underneath we've got this lovely intense dark shadow this highlight then around the edge and then bringing that dark line down from the hair down the side of the jaw and then that darker line with the reflected highlight just underneath it again right to the edge just wipe it on the kitchen roll a little bit I'm just now pushing that transition out into the cheek a little bit and that now is looking really nice <laughs> but this is the thing you, when you, you think you're just working with tone and pushing bits of graphite around to develop and build a full portrait it's absolutely fantastic so now again I'm coming in with the soft end of a 4b pencil and it's just giving us that clarity of this line with the reflected highlight but very softly so that goes right up to the hair then we've got coming down from the ear and then the tone coming across and under and we do have here a little bit of highlight just coming down next to the jaw that's absolutely lovely <laughs> hope you're enjoying this like I say we've, this is the sixth of seven of the BTS guys and then we shall get back on with <laughs> some other subjects in Harry Potter so Now I'm just using the blending stump quickly to fill in areas of the blue line on his shirt. On the, the cotton shirt and we'll just pull out again it's lighter on this side and we'll pull out the white stripes using the putty rubber again we've got the slightly darker tonal qualities and this is much darker underneath here so I'm just filling the lot in and we'll make that darker presently so I'm going to use the dirty putty rubber for this first and you can just see how easy it is to quickly 
indicate the white lines. And they are now standing out on his shirt quite nicely. Again, I'm just pinching the rubber to get the sharp point on it. <laughs> And that allows me to just indicate these white lines. Again, the color on this side, we've got a highlight going up. Right the way up onto the back of the neck. And then we've got some lines coming down the side. Highlight it, but now again, I'm doing this quite quickly and impressionistically. You can spend a lot more time on it if you would like. And so, with the 4B pencil, just really indicating that dark shadow right next to the collar. And the same on this side and that just crisps things up a little bit and the same for these slightly darker tones underneath Again, here we've got a dark coming down on the shirt. A couple of little creases. We can just in indicate, just using some little lines, those little creases, the underneath of the button and the shadow there underneath that button. And that just gives us a little bit more clarity on the shirt. And that's looking really good. I think we'll next we'll go on to the hair. We've got a tie to kind of bring in, but we'll do the hair and then we'll do the shirt afterwards. So now we're back in with the 8B pencil and we're going to do Jin's hair. Now, I'm using the 8B pencil because, no, nope, that's bust. <laughs> oh dear, let's try another one. Oh, I keep breaking, the 8B, you get black much quicker, but it, it is so soft you can absolutely break it loads. And so what I'm doing now is indicating but going in the direction of the hair all of these darker areas but I'm not just doing a black mass so you can see I'm just filling in the darker shadows and I'm trying to not use too much of the flat but I'm spinning the pencil so as I've got a sharper edge And then it just allows me to fill in the dark mass quicker. So here we've got the hair coming down. I'm just twisting to try and get as sharp point as I possibly can. But at first we are going for to try and fill in the darker larger areas so coming up to the top this this top of this kind of leaf shape here we've got much darker there's a V coming down there again I'm I'm gonna I'm doing this really impressionistically very quickly but I'm still drawing it in the way that the hair is growing 
again just drawing some of the darker lines off so here you can see they kind of go up vertically and it's good that you can have some crossing over because that's what hairs do they're not all perfectly lined up one next to another they may be in some ladies hairdressing commercials that may be true but that's not what we've got here and again you can see we, we now need to intensify the darkness of that eyebrow that's underneath this hair that's coming down and we'll have to do the same on this side but it's only when we put the darker on that we start to see where we need to increase and intensify some other darks so now we've got right at the top of the hair we've got this darker shadow right at the top and you can see how it starts to come across diagonally and now the pencil's a lot flatter I'm getting nice thicker darker lines but I'm still twisting it to get a slightly sharper point but you can see already that's really making a huge difference to our full overall drawing so here on his hair coming down we've got this V shape and the dark coming down the side of his head to towards his ear so now all of this up to here is just one huge dark mass but again I'm filling it in in the direction that the hair grows and crossing some of the lines and because we've got the mid-tone underneath that's working with us and just giving us lines and tone that make it look like real hair again I am just whacking this down really quickly you can spend a long time doing this again just looking at where the dark lines are coming up to that highlighted part and just filling in as much as I can and that little wispy bits over the top and these parts coming right up now I'm just going to sharpen the pencil So that I've got a nice sharper point I'm being very careful so that I, and twisting so I just don't want it to split and splinter then I've got hair coming over coming down all coming over in the direction the hair here and that already is looking really really lovely so I'm just going to come in with the the darker my older putty rubber I'm just going to pull in some highlights again just keep pinching the putty rubber and it allows us to
indicate some highlights. Sorry, just brain went off on a tangent. I was in. <laughs> yeah, just brain had gone. Yeah, we, we're doing highlights. There we go. Let's get back to it. Engage brain cell, Mr. Billy. So anyway, we 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 use the putty rubber and it, it gives us the highlighted lines. Now where it's so dark here, we obviously can't pull that off and we don't need to. But where we've got some of these lines coming down over the hair and over the forehead some little highlighted bits and just putting these little wispy bits in so like here just very fine lines so when we put the dark lines right in over the top that'll help and then again here this just little transitions are fine again I'm coming in with the blending stump and now I'm just pushing some of that tone around because we haven't got lots of bright highlights on the hair so we can push them in and again it helps with the transitions from the darker areas we can increase those a little bit and that helps again down shadow caused by the hair we can make those darker and this is literally just using the blending stump as your drawing tool and then we can come back in with the putty rubber And you get these much finer highlights. You can see there how it's just really lifting off his head, just really helping the head look three dimensional. A couple of little ones at the back, then over the front, these curves. Where the hair just comes down and curves in now you can see those highlights are really really lovely but for the ones going towards the edge I'm just gently going over using the blending stump it just softens them down a little bit now I'm going to come in with the 2B pencil and I'm just quickly adding some fast lines because of the fineness of his hair and it gives us that human real detail that we need of all the strands of hair working together. Again, I'm just twisting to keep the sharpness of the pencil. And then coming down to this edge bit. And then we've got a number of fine lines coming right down across his eye and just using the 2B pencil being careful you see how these come below this eyebrow now quickly I'm going to come in 
So we really need to build the darkness up underneath that eyebrow. And then using a sharpened 8B pencil, I can get some of these really nice sharp dark lines of his hair coming down. So now we've got these coming down, very dark one just coming underneath the eyebrow a bit. And you can see now that's really giving us the effect that we're after. So now again just building up the intensity the hairs now I'm back in with the 2B pencil and I can just increase these and it's so nice to do because it just makes it look really human it's rather than just having like a solid edge You've now got all these fantastic hairs that are just splintering down. So again, right at the top, I'm just going to sharpen my 2B pencil. That didn't sharpen enough. That's better. I've got the wispy hairs at the top and at the back just coming off. few coming off the sides they're down off the side of his face and from the back of his head those lovely hairs that are just plinging up and over just some thin fine wispy lines Again, just more out the back. Just, just a few nice simple lines, twisting the pencil. And it just helps to make it look much more real. So coming out the bottom of this V, we've got some shapes and then again, lots coming out the back of the neck where the hair goes around the back. And then these ones over the ear. And then coming down. That's absolutely lovely. Just making sure I'm with the 8B. Oh, it looks split completely. That's the thing, they're so soft, I'm pressing on so hard. I think that's the last time I might be able to use that one. You've got to be careful. But again, I'm I'm actually, you know, because I'm working so quickly, I'm a bit brutal on these pencils. So I'm increasing the intensity underneath the hair. And this is the thing, you know, go slow. You don't have to go as quick as I'm trying. The shadow down his jawline. And you can see now how that's all coming together. Putting that hair in has just made it look absolutely wonderful. And that's where the whole difference comes in when you're building up the tone. So now, 
can. I'm going to come in. I'm going to try and not break the pencil. So again, I'm pressing hard, but vertically, more vertically. And that's building up that intensity there. That's really, really lovely. Dark right next to the eye. So now I am actually going to go in and I'm using the 8B and I'm just really darkening inside the eye where the pupil is and again these are just minor details that you can do to build up as much or as little as you want edge of the iris there that's really really lovely so now just sharpened it again I'm now going to come in I'm using flat side very softly so that I don't splinter it and I'm increasing that shadow underneath the hair in the corner of that eye socket right by the corner of the eye And then we've got that shadow right by the edge of his upper jawline, cheekbone, sorry, that comes off into the hairline. And then there, just got a couple of little reflected highlights underneath in the actual hairline. And that's the beauty with a putty rubber, you can literally just dab it and they appear. So now with the 8B, increasing the dark in the nostrils. And then the dark inside his lips around his teeth. I'm just looking at the reference I'm just filling that in as much as we need increasing a little bit of the lines So now, using the 8B, very soft on the side, I'm being very gentle so I don't snap the nib. And just very gently increase the intensity of the shadow down the edge of his jaw and underneath on his neck this bit up at the top <laughs> now back in with the 2B <laughs> and here we've got The edge of his nose curving down coming underneath again I'm trying to be very careful because the lighting is so soft and then it's dark here Sh 
shadow coming round underneath his nose. And then again, this little bit of shadow underneath a lower nostril. And then the crease in between the two parts of his upper lip and then just on the side. That's really lovely. Again, just increasing the shading on the nose a little bit, either side of the highlight. Oops, that was a little bit too much. Unfortunately, there's all that hair there. I just pressed on a little bit too much then. But fortunately, it was within the area that I was working on. I'm not going to use the blending stump. I'm actually going to use the brush. So here I'm just literally softening the edge of that pencil that I just put on. And then if we come in with a putty rubber, that'll really pull up the highlight. Then we want the side of the nose coming down underneath that reflected highlight again the one inside that upper lip side of the nose and then the side of the nostril and then I'm just very carefully dabbing on the cheek just between the nostril and the upper eye and then again just a couple of little highlights dabbing that upper eye inside the upper eyelid again on this side Around the lower eyelid, highlights right on the edge. That's quite a crisp one coming down. But we do need to soften that edge. So again, I'm just using the brush, softening where I put that strong highlight in, and then again the one above. So all of these I can go over with the brush. And soften it but the highlight is still there so the nose you can see is now looking more three-dimensional and the reflected highlights underneath the nostril you can just fill those in that's really lovely so now we're getting pretty close to done Again, I'm just pushing some of this tone around. Darker above that highlight that we just put in right in that corner. Then the eye darkening underneath. Shadow on the side of the nose and the corner caused by the hair just intensify that a little bit and even on the lips 
I'm just softening those. So now we're getting very close to completion and that's looking really good. So now we're going to come in with a 4B pencil and we're going to fill in this tone around. We could have left it, it'd be quite arty to leave it with just the lines, you know, if I hadn't even done anything on his shirt. That would look rather funky, but like I say, we're going to quickly put this in. I'm using the flat of the pencil just to be very, very quick. So here, got to be careful. Coming down, even though I'm going to be impressionistic. And we're not going to go to the edge of the paper. But we are just going to fill this in relatively quickly. Again, we've got the construction lines in. So what I'm going to do is you can see here we've got the direction of the weave of the jumper and the same here so I'm just filling it in in the direction that the the patterning of the weave there just fills everything in and this is like the burgundy parts on his jumper his cardigan or whatever it may well be so again this darker one now I'm just indicating long dark lines using the flat of the pencil down to where we've got that nice kind of creamy a bit But again, the direction of the tone coming down around the collar. And then the same on this side. Yeah, I mean, I could have just said, oh, you know, just wiggle it that way. But this is just good practice for you to just whack in some tone using directional lines rather than just any and it's quite free because I'm not resting my hand on the paper and I'm pivoting from my shoulder so we've got all that tone down quickly I just get my piece of kitchen roll now we just push that around I've lightly pushed that over that's how you fill in the tone there and all of the paper is covered now with the baseline that's exactly like we did with the hair and so we can just build on that carefully and quickly just again just being impressionistic so we've got more of a darker shadow down here curving round up to the top crease line the join not the crease line the, the fold the, where the seams join together seams that's the word I was looking for so in this diagonal We've got some darker lines, which is fine. And then now, because we've got those original tones in, we can do some opposite direction lines just to fill in all the area of the dark and the shadow. we're using the tone of the pencil to do the work for us. Now you can see that just really lifts 
Jin's portrait off the page. Again, I'm going over all those areas and it kind of just bonds it together. Just joins it very, very quickly. So again, now we've got the shadow coming down on his right shoulder as the jumper folds towards his shirt. And that goes up. And we've got that little fold there. Again, a bit of cross hatching quickly. Just kind of unifies it. That's looking rather lovely. Now we've got, just need to sharpen this a bit. Now we've got the tie. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna smudge a bit of tone over. And then I'm using the flat of the pencil. That's those kind of lighter gold stripes. And we bring in the tone down and across. We've got that crease how it's kind of folded in on itself. And we've got that dark. Again, where that comes down and under. Then we've got the crease of that shadow. Again, the fold underneath. And then where that goes up to the neck. So I'm now going to come in with the blending stump just because it's it's nice and silky. I can just push that tone around really quickly. On the tie. And it just gives us that nicer clarity. So again, coming in with the putty rubber. just indicate a couple of highlights quick and then the darker tone and then we've got the shirt and we've got the stripes that are inside And we can just, I say, you can spend as long or as little on these kind of details as you want. Again, right next to the neck. The tie coming down on this side. with the shadows. Now if I come in with the 2B pencil just allows us to crisp up some of those blue lines and the same here I'm doing this really quick. A little bit of cross hatching. And that. G 
gives us the a lot more definition on the stripes on his shirt now. Again, just in the dark, going around the corner of his collar. And did see, oh yeah, here. So I'm just pulling up that highlight. On the top of his collar and that is definitely looking good and what I want to do now these are last little bits I'm now just gonna carefully Touching the highlights in his eyes. Again, just on the little highlight on the eyeball. Little bit on the teeth. And these are just last little detail, a little bit on the upper lip. Now I'm just softening those highlights on the teeth, just softening that back down a little bit. And then clean up by the edge of his neck, just around the hair. That is gin complete. I hope you've had fun. I've had a blast drawing that. And we now only have J-Hope to go. Six of the BTS guys done, one left to do. I hope you've had fun. Please do like and subscribe, share the videos, encourage others uh, to enjoy their drawing. But thanks very much. Take care. See you in the next lesson. ta -da.